I missed it. I don't got a special one. Just put on a pink dress. Just so I can run out the door. Thought I missed it, but I didn't. It was right there. And no, I didn't add no new piercings yet. I'm still thinking about it. I don't really think I should get that point over here. We'll see. But we are about to do a city tour and check out some stuff. I think we stopped and get like coffee and I forgot what the that one pastry is that's very famous with the powdered sugar on it. I think we'll eat that too. Also I got a stain on my dress from when I washed wet other clothes. Like I got like a piece of a black stain. I feel wet. I should have put my mic too. Matter of fact, let me see if I got my mic. So halfway down the house. To them, this reminded them of a hump of a camel. They called those the Camelback shotgun homes. Camelback. And there is a reason why they did that. They built those Camelbacks that way because they used to tax you based on the amount of openings on the front of your home. But very sort of church cross, and then obviously as a whole, very sort of neighborhood. In fact, a lot of things that we have today in New Orleans, we would not have. buried inside this one tomb right now. Uh, we can bury as many people as we want inside just one tomb here in New Orleans. There's no limit. However, there is a specific process that we have to follow to do this. Also, is a law we have to abide by as well. So the way this works, your average tomb here is going to have two vaults. Top vault, bottom vault, and a shelf in between them. If somebody passed away, they go into the coffin, they go in that top vault, they put up brick and mortar, and then they seal it off with this plaque. Mm -hmm. Once it is sealed off, and this was law here, it cannot be opened, no ifs, ands, or buts about it for one year and one day. It has to be sealed off for that entire length of time. Now the reasoning for this is the heat. So these tombs go through one full summer here because inside these tombs it gets up to 300 degrees. Mm. It sustains that for three, four, or five months as it's hot here. It's like an oven, it's like a slow cooking process, it is like a slow cremation process. Unit days they came up with the trial and trial in that unit day, everything's that happened to you by it decomposing, it happens. After that unit day, it is just as if you actually were cremated. That is what is left. Now they could actually do cremation here. Now the Catholic religion did not believe in, did not allow cremation for a very long time. So I guess kind of your long loophole way around that belief. Uh, I keep saying the year and the day, so that one day on top of yours, out of respect to the family, coming here on that one year anniversary love with, paying your respects and all this, honor that, and having that extra day. And also so that way, this next step of process I'm about to tell you does not happen on that one year anniversary. After that unit day, they're gonna take the plaque back down, break down that brick and mortar, take out the coffin. Now we do not have a coffin law here. Some people choose to bypass that altogether, not use the coffin, put the body inside the top vaults. Once they do use coffin to control them, use a wooden coffin, which helps the breaking down process. The coffin itself will break down. The cheapest way to actually do this, which you find a lot of people do, is to get a $500 wooden box to you. The reason why you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on a coffin here is because the coffin's not going to stay in this tomb anyway. The remains don't stay in the coffin. They take the remains, they put the remains into a bag, or a small wooden box, label who it is, and then from the front of the tomb they have access to what's called the cavo. It's about the bottom of the second vault, it's about two and a half, three feet below the ground. Underneath this tomb is a big area down there that's concreted in, it's called the cavo, which is French for cave. And so that's where right now, all the remains of everyone you see listening on this tomb, that's where they're at, underneath this tomb in that cavo. We continue to do this over and over and over again as long as that unit days in between. However, let's say this. Right, let's say this is somebody in this Murano family here. Let's say they're currently going through their unit day. It's only been seven months. Somebody else in the Murano family passes away. Now what are they gonna do? Can't go inside this tomb, right? It's totally law. Can't be open. It's like five months of the day before this tomb can't be open. They go inside of a tomb like that big one there on the end. That is a society tomb. They have them all around the cemetery. They have all priest tombs, all nun tombs. That's an all Croatian tomb, different group. But they'll use those as temporary tombs as well, based on the available space. Same rules apply, they got a whole unit day inside that temporary tomb, and after the unit day, the remains get transferred to the family tomb. So now that I've explained this process, you understand. Just like this one, as you walk around, no matter how many names you find on a tomb, they got tomb to that plaques in the front, front side, front side, and back. No matter how many names you can find on a tomb, that's how people bring that tomb, you're gonna realize there's a lot of people bring inside 
these two. In fact, there's an estimated one million people buried inside just this one cemetery. Just this one. Hey, guess what? We got 45 cemeteries here in New Orleans, and almost half of them are just as big as this one. It's a lot of people. But think about this. You're going to take every name off of every tomb inside every single cemetery of New Orleans, and those societies have a couple hundred people buried in them. We're going to take all those names, and you individually bury them on one single plot in the ground at a time. And you know what New Orleans will be at that point? It will be a cemetery. Nothing but. We're completely surrounded by water, living on that land we have. You can't leave this city no matter which direction you try to. You can't get out of New Orleans without crossing over a body of water. It's a fact. We do not have enough land here in New Orleans to bury the amount of people that we already have inside this city. Much less we'll have in the future. So, with the amount of people that were coming to this city, and as fast as the city was growing, the biggest concern here was not the water table. It was where we're going to bury all of our people and still have and continue to grow the city. And luckily for us, they already had the answer. We already had a solution and tradition of theirs. And lucky for us, they did it. Last cemetery that was done in New Orleans, our newest cemetery, 1872. We have not had a new cemetery since 1872 because we don't need it. The process works. We continue to this day to do it this way. Now, at this point, though, you may be wondering, well, if you hadn't had a cemetery since 1872 and you've got 45 of them, at some point, they ran out of places to put cemeteries, right, and still have us. Also, I'm going to tell you, our population right now is right back where it was prior to Hurricane Katrina. But at least a third of our population today are people that were not living here prior to Katrina. Which means a third of our population are new people, new families, people that are not going to have family tombs inside our cemeteries. Well, let's say they fall in love with New Orleans and they want to get buried here. What do they got to do? Well, you got to think it's like real estate because it is. You can buy and sell tombs here. There is a used tomb market just like eBay. There is. Go through the Catholic Church or our diocese and you can purchase a used tomb. Now, the way they're able to do this, kind of the overall process for that is, is there's a 50-year uh, clock. So 50 years after the last person been buried, after the last contact, but it's really 50 years after the last payments been made, they do pay a yearly fee to the cemetery for the upkeep. After 50 years of inactivity, the cemetery takes over ownership of it, and they do it what they want. Whether they sell it, if it's an older rundown tomb, they will tear it down. As y'all heard the story about the cemeteries, they only have 45 in the city but the 45 hold millions. And y'all heard the process of how they do it, which is really cool too. Back there is also, I believe, like how that is right there, is space until, cause they said they cannot add to the family tombs until a year and a day until the body cremates on its own which is pretty cool too, that these tombs get that hot. They get that hot, y'all, that it cremates itself. And these are family tombs. These are really cool and they're beautiful. They are so beautiful and they've been here for Some are updated, some are newer. Like you said, people sell them. Like this one. I bet you this one is for sale. Cause there's no names. See, there's no names or anything on it. So it's a good chance that this one is one that's for sale that people can actually buy. But it's pretty cool to have something like this that you can put all your family in. And like, all of them can go in there basically, you know? Sad, but cool. Cause it's like, how they say family over everything, family sticks together, family for life. New Orleans, they, I mean, they really make that those slogans real by making tombs like this. <clears throat> Look how big this cemetery is. Y'all goes all the way down there. All the way down there. Goes all the way back there.
pay y'all. So we are now at this um, restaurant. It's the beignets. The thing that we want to try, the pastry, the powdered sugar all on it. And we get, they have it for us in our tour. I'm on a city tour right now. And you get three beignets. You get their special coffee that they make. And then they have like this fruit water that was for free. So I'm about to test this out too. They said it's pretty good. Like orange and strawberries in it. It is a nice white taste to it. But let's look at the beignets. That's the other day, right? So I just finished my city tour and took a picture with my guide. He was really cool. Cute little <laughs> white guy too. But he was funny. Y'all, if y'all can, that is the tour to get on. I'll give y'all the name of the tour and stuff and his name. But that is the one. Definitely. I got another tour in about an hour, I think, or two hours. In about two hours, I'm back in my hotel. Um, 
trying to see if I should get lunch or not. I just had them been days. Don't know if I need lunch. I'm gonna walk up to my room first, sit down, and then see.